Hey, it's MJ, the student actuary, and today we're going to be talking about the eight, yes, there are as many as eight uh, types of actuaries. So without further ado, let's, uh, yeah, let's get into this topic on yeah, the various actuaries there are. Firstly, um, all these eight actuaries have in common are the following skill sets. They're all, you know, they all did financial mathematics, business accounting, statistics, model building, life calculations, economics, communication, professional conduct, risk analysis, and all that type of stuff. So all of that's, these are the skills that make someone an actuary. Um, what they can then do is there are specialist subjects, which then branch off and hone in on specific um, areas. So now I'm going to be going through the eight types of actuaries. So let's look at the most common or the original actuary. This was the, well they call themselves the life actuary. They can calculate when you're going to die and that's very important when it comes to life insurance and you know the purchasing of you know pure endowments and all those type of products. Companies that hire these type of actuaries um, well, I'm going to be going through the South African companies, is Old Mutual. There is a fun story uh, behind the name Old Mutual, like what exactly is a mutual, and that was that these life companies were not necessarily built for profit. It was only um, quite recently that the, the mutuals became private companies, could start seeking profit, and that's why Old Mutual is called Old Mutual. Anyway, let's move on because we've got quite a few to go through. Um, there's also the health actuary. They'll work for medical aids such as discovery. They calculate when you get sick, um, how much a sickness is going to cost you, um, how long you're going to spend in hospital, what are the important things to keep you fit. All that type of stuff is discovery. A little fun fact about discovery. If you look at their logo, it is not... Um, arrows as as I first thought it was it's actually a pyramid it's a three-dimensional pyramid that you can yeah if you, if you look hard enough you'll see it and um, hopefully that's not an Illuminati reference anyway moving on and we have the general actuary uh, the general actuary does everything or covers all the risks that aren't life well that's that's kind of the definition they give to themselves because they're doing car insurance, they're doing house insurance, they're doing transportation insurance. They, I mean, they take on a lot. Um, so you have to know about ships, you need to know about the motor industry, you need to know about traffic. And what's interesting about the general actuary is that he has to account for multiple claims and claims of varying amounts. So with the life actuary, someone dies and they get paid a certain amount. You know, you can't half die. Um, or you, or you can get sick and then you get like a sickness benefit. But for the sake of this, let's just say, yeah, you get, uh, you die and you get paid your amount. With the general actuary, I mean, your car could get a little scratch, or it could get a big scratch. You know, if you drive into a pole, or you could drive into another car and then, you know, it's a double risk. So, the general actuary mathematically is much more. Um, short term uh, whereas the life actuary looks more at the long term and they're different but they're the same if that makes sense anyway moving on oh last thing um, let's go back to that if you look at their logo uh, Santum the umbrella is pretty much the universal symbol for um, general actuaries because they provide cover in the same way that an umbrella covers you from the rain so insurance covers you from risk. Anyway, moving on to the pension actuary. And these guys work for companies like Alexander Forbes. And you can just see by their slogan, uh, securing your financial well-being. These guys determine how much money you should set aside every month um, if you want to retire at, say, age 60 or 65, how much your living costs are going to be. Um, they consider inflation and they've got quite a difficult job when it comes to investing the money because there are a lot of rules um, there has been a big shuffle in this industry before you had 
defined benefit funds and defined contribution funds. Now we're just doing defined contributions, so which is actually worse than defined benefit, but that's another topic. So the pension um, industry is going through a little bit of a change at the moment. Um, however, they are sometimes considered as the boring actuaries, uh, but we won't say that too loud in case there are some pension actuaries watching. Um, then you get the exciting actuaries. These are your financial actuaries. These are guys that look at the stock market, that look at the bond market, and they look at the property market. Basically, anything that comes to investments, these guys are looking into it. They're trying to maximize your return, and they try to minimize your risk, and they do that through diversification and all that type of stuff. You don't have to be an actuary to do this. I mean, you can just be... Um, anyone with a financial degree, an accountant, or other financial guys can do this. The actuaries, they just look at it from a different perspective. They look more at liability and risk. and they So they bring a nice view to the discussion. So they won't be making the decisions by themselves, but they'll be part of a board that does so. And yeah, Coronation is a company that, that has hired actuaries, not specifically for actuarial roles, but they want, like I said, the actuarial thought behind it. Then you get the bank actuary. Um, FNB, um, they actually hired, I think the most people from my class went to work for FNB. Uh, bank actuaries, I mean, they can do a variety of different things. They can look at, you know, pure bank stuff, like how long does someone have their deposit for? They can calculate loans, um, but they can also, there's also the, the uh, the investment bank that they could also work on. So that's looking into swaps, derivatives, all those weird financial instruments that caused the global financial crisis. It was because probably those companies didn't have enough actuaries because I'm hoping the actuaries would have said, hey guys, this is going to cause chaos. This, this, um, the rumor is that they get paid the most, but it's also the most stressful of the jobs. So yeah, there's the bank actuaries. Then there's this new actuary that's brought up onto the block, and you can see I don't have a company because I don't know what companies these guys work for. But if you read what their website says about them, you can see that they could work for probably a consultancy company or any company in general. Because these chartered enterprise risk actuaries, they make confident decisions relating to complex financial challenges affecting business by applying qualitative and quantitative insights to risk management. So this is, this is if you read actuarial newspapers, um, this is the hot topic at the moment. These guys even get their own separate um, title known as a SERA. And so yeah, these are like the cool kids on the block at the moment. Not that much is known because it is very, very new. Now, there are also a whole bunch of other new actuaries coming in, and that's why the last title is quite broad. I'm calling it the other actuaries. Because actuaries, the skill sets that, that we have, can apply to countless um, professions, countless um, industries. So I'm just going to go through three, um, well, we call these other actuaries greenfield actuaries, um, emerging uh, industries. And yeah, so I'll just talk about three of them, just because there's the three that I've been exposed to. I worked for one, I went for an interview with the other one, and I'm currently working in the last one. So yeah, without further ado, let's check it out. So there's the wellness actuary. Um, I worked for an American company that looked at cholesterol, blood sugar, um, diets, eating, all that type of stuff. And this kind of aligned with employee benefits. It kind of was with health actuary, it was kind of with the pension actuary, it was a little bit in between, but they look at trying to keep people healthy. Um, only work there temporary, so I don't know too much about it, but yeah, they call themselves wellness actuaries. Then there is the gaming actuary, I went to an interview for this, I got all excited, I thought I was going to work for you know PlayStation or Xbox and make some awesome game because a lot of games require randomness and probability and I was like yeah this is going to be awesome I got to the interview and it was about gambling and casinos and how long do people play game you know play uh, the slots for and how much money do they have and 
it's very interesting because you can bring in a lot of the, the theory from general insurance, um, specifically ruin theory, into casinos to make sure that players don't lose all their money at once and that you can slowly uh, sap it from them. I declined the job. Um, and instead, I work as a programming actuary. So this is a little startup company and we do the database and admin services for life insurance companies all over the world, specifically in Africa. And what's fun about this job is that you need to understand the actuarial side of the business because the problems will be like um, program a rule that says if a policy lapses they can be reinstated and that their waiting period will be extended by 12 months. So as you can see you need to know a little bit of the actuarial jargon um, before you can even attempt to program and then yeah so I work just pushing buttons on a laptop basically. Um, I love my job. But yeah, there are many more. There are so many different areas that actuaries are going into and which makes it quite an exciting profession. It's very difficult to study, but once you get this degree, you will have lots of job opportunities and yeah, you just you can add value in so many different um, industries. So yeah, that is it. Um, what are your thoughts on the different types of actuaries? And if I've left anything else out or if you've got anything to input or you've got any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for watching. Cheers.